What's good, everybody? Welcome to the Pull Up and Chat. My name is BJ Matthews, a.k.a. B. Just before we get started, follow us on the YouTube page, the Pull Up Basketball Podcast, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Twitter, TikTok, you know what I'm saying, the Pull Up Basketball Podcast. Like, share, subscribe, all of our YouTube videos, you know what I'm saying. Hit that notification bell by the subscribe button, get our updated content as well as buy the Pull Up shirt, you know what I'm saying. $30 for people inside of San Diego or L.A. County, $35 outside of people of the county. Let's get it popping. All right, look, you know, this is the week of reckoning. This is the week that something's going to be said about this situation. Um, and I'm explaining why in this video. Excuse me. I've been keeping y'all up to date to what's been going on with Kawhi and PG, just keeping y'all up to tune, up to speed about what's happening with the situation. Um, you know, I started this about two, three weeks ago, you know, starting with Kawhi and PG coming back and my sentiments, why. And um, so far, everything has been pretty much on point with what I've been saying, you know, starting with Kawhi, uh, you know, going and shooting, um, you know, doing that pregame workout with at Golden State, Paul George, doing the shooting workout at the Honey Training Center. Um, the reports that's been being said and stuff like that. It's been lined up so far, but this is the week. They got three weeks left to the season. This is the week where we're going to probably hear something about what's going on with these two and um, when they're going to be, be returning. Now, Paul George, another update about PG uh, just happened yesterday. He was seen playing four on four at the Honey Training Center at the LA Clippers facility, practice facility in Playa Vista. And um, he was playing four on four um, with some of the personnel and the coaches of the team. A couple of those guys I know played some some basketball, you know what I'm saying? So it was like he's playing against bums. He's playing against actual guys and he was actually getting touched on his elbow. Right? So that forms the contact. But this is why I was saying before that you don't play five on five or four on four with no contact. That's just, that doesn't make sense. And we have to realize a lot of things that are being said in the media, you have to check the sources and you have to use your own discretion. You have to do your own research because some of these, a lot of these reporters do not give accurate information. So that's beside itself. Paul George is playing four on four uh, yesterday, Sunday. So, that doesn't surprise me. And also, the question is, how long has he been really doing this? Because this is just one video. And this was put out by one of the coaches of the team, uh, player development coaches. So you have to ask yourself the question, how long has Paul George been even playing 4-on-4 or 5-on-5? Four five five? You know what I'm saying? So putting two to two together, um, this is why I say what I'm saying about what's going on with PG. Because let's look at the, you know, timeline. PG Torres to UCL back in December. It's been three months since he's played a game. He's played 26 games this season. Now, from what we understand about this torn UCL, the talks were, was he going to have this surgery or not? The Tommy John surgery, which repairs that UCL in your elbow. Now, um... After he tore it, we found out this Tommy John surgery, from what I researched, is an 8 to 12 month recovery. It doesn't happen in basketball quite often. They don't do this type of surgery, usually for baseball players, you know, for pitchers, you know what I'm saying? We throw the ball and, you know, you can tear this ligament. So it's not known for basketball players. So if it's an 8 to 12 month recovery period, and that's just really just the estimate, you know, on point estimate it would make sense for him to have the, the surgery back in December or January because check it out. If he goes and has this surgery now, he's going to not only miss this season, he's going to miss pretty much the whole entire next season. So that's two playoff runs you're going to be missing. Again, one of the problems that we keep seeing with the Clippers, they don't have their full core together. We keep saying we want to see everybody together. Kawhi got hurt in the playoffs last year. Paul George got hurt this year who's Kawhi's out as well. They've had so many injuries uh, with Nicholas Batum, Marcus Morris, um, Luke Kennard, Visca Zubak. They've had so many different injuries. That's why Ty lose my coach of the year. That's just another such, uh, subject, though. They have not been fully healthy together. Sergi Baca just got released from the team going to the Bucks. you know what I'm saying, the trade deadline. So they haven't had a, they haven't had a full team together. So Paul George has this surgery and goes in and has it. That makes no sense. He's not having the surgery. So the next question I ask myself, okay, well, if he's not having the surgery, 
and they're just going to do a non non surgical procedure. Would they would it pop up in their minds to just hold them out this year in the summer and just have them come back? Well, my point is Nicholas Platoon had this same injury. Y'all remember Nicholas Platoon had the same injury with the Charlotte Hornets, who's now with the Clippers, which is ironic. He had the same injury or torn UCL as Paul George. He was out. It was for eight to 12 weeks. He came back within that time span. So we're at about three months right now from Paul George tearing his UCL. So it makes sense that he's actually out there playing four on four, playing five on five and doing these things. And it makes sense to me that he is ready to about to be ready to come back at this point because the timeline matches. You didn't get the surgery. You're out there playing uh, four on four, five on five. And it just all matches. Now, here's the key. Here's the key. Here's the key. There's when it comes to ramping up, I think people need to understand what it means to ramp up. Ramp up is really the process of taking step by step by step to return back on the court full fledged and participating in drills and stuff like that. PG has been ramping up since about the last two, three weeks since we've seen him shooting shots in the gym. That's a ramp up. Um, a ramp, another ramp up is him playing four on four yesterday. That's a ramp up. Another ramp up is probably going to happen. He's going to start practicing with the team. That's another ramp up. And that's going to be full contact. After that, a ramp up is he going to be on the court playing in high impact games. That's a ramp up. He he comes back for the playoffs and plays in that. That's another ramp up. Because see, the thing about it is a lot of people hear the word ramp up means it's just going to be a smooth transition up. That's not necessarily the case because you look at guys like Jamal Murray. Jamal Murray was scheduled to come back in January. That's when he was talking about becoming coming back because he's been looking good in film and he's been working out. He's been, you know, getting ready for January. And it's about that time span, time limit. And now we hear Jamal Murray is not even close to return. So how do you go from getting ready to return in January to now you're not even close? See, this is what happened. He looked good, you know what I'm saying, working out, training, all that good stuff. They And I report this last week, he went to the Denver Nuggets G League team and he was practicing with them. So of course what happened as far as I'm as far as I'm concerned is when he started practicing with the G League team he didn't look ready to be out there. So that's why they say he's not even close to returning. And at that that's when you know ramp ups can go from, you know, straight up to like, you know, across to down to up to down to like it goes all around as you get higher and higher in the process so that plays a difference of when this when it comes back because when you talk about injuries of course with the elbow or the leg let's say it starts to swell up after you do all that impact if it swells up or if you start feeling like discomfort and pain you have to lower the lower the tension on that ligament you're testing to see how it responds to high impact situations if it responds good let's keep moving up if it if it doesn't respond you got to you got to take a step back and then try to re restart the re -ramp, uh, re ramp process again so that's why you have the time limit you know can get pushed back or it can be staying where it's at but this is my last point the reason why it this plays so much favor to the clippers because here's the thing they got nine games left in the season in those nine games they have about two three days of rest per game they have about two or three days of rest per game. That's very, very critical when you talk about ramping up somebody because you get those days of rest after those games to let your body recover. Because I'm pretty sure once he comes back, and this is why men's restriction happens when the people come back after big, long layoffs, because they need to slowly work the person back. But the rest days are so important because the Clippers, they, for the most part, been playing a lot of their games one day, one day rest and they playing. One day rest and they playing. That can hurt Kawhi and Paul George after coming off these long injuries because you're asking to, you know, put them out there again after they just played the night before. You know what I'm saying? But now that they're going to have two, three days of rest when they come back, that's going to, that's something the Clippers are looking into. Okay, well, this is, this is about time to time that's going to be attractive for them to come back on the court because they're going to be able to play but they're going to also be able to get time off so they don't have to miss no none of their last nine games or eight games, whatever. So 
uh, the Clippers play tomorrow on the Denver Nuggets TNT. And if y'all have noticed, every game that the Clippers been playing on TNT, Chris Haynes made a report. He made a report about Kawhi Leonard uh, coming back, you know, when they played Phoenix the first time. A strong possibility back in January. They made a, a, another um, update about Paul George. The next time they played Phoenix about if he, if everything looks right, he can come back uh, at the middle, beginning of the middle of March. Um, and then they made another, you know, update against Golden State where Kawhi Leonard was shooting and about, you know, um, he's trying to ramp up to come back. So all these all these things on TNT is being revealed by Chris Haynes. So I expect another update by tomorrow or Thursday about what's going on and their final uh, their final decision of, and their final plan. So that's all I got to say about that. You know what I'm saying? Continue to follow us on the Pull Up Basketball Podcast. Pull up the seat, pull up a chair, pull up a lot. Peace. Out of here like swimwear.